So season four of The Chosen is coming up really quickly. I mean, we've been talking about it for a while, all the behind the scenes, everything that's kind of going along with that. But ultimately, we are getting closer and closer to the release of this season. So there's a bunch of stuff that we've talked about that we've definitely confirmed. Things like John the Baptist's death or the return of Joanna and all these different things that are happening in The Chosen season four. But we're getting more and more confirmations daily. So what are the things that I haven't seen any confirmation yet of that I think are actually going to happen? Well, let's go through my list of five things that I think are very plausible and look at some of the scripture behind them uh, coming into season four. So to give a timeline, remember that season four is kind of the last year of Jesus's ministry. Dallas has said several times that season five is going to be Holy Week. So if season five is Holy Week, then that means that we have to kind of finish everything that happens before that point in this next season. That doesn't mean that we're going to get every single verse, every single miracle, every single thing that Jesus does in the scriptures in this season. But there are some key things that I think are going to be really, really important for us to see. Now, the first one of those things is found in Matthew 22, and this is one of my favorite verses. So let's check this out. And this is entitled the great commandment. So this is number one. But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the greatest in the law? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments, uh, on these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. So this is one of my favorite verses, and of course, many, many people have, you know, read this verse and talked about this being the greatest commandment. It kind of sums up all of Jesus' teachings, but here, I think it's going to be really cool if we get to see more and more of this. Remember, in season four, we're going to see Jesus kind of dissenting more with the Pharisees, and especially the Sadducees, but the Pharisees, for sure, we're going to see him fighting with them, doing different things, um, and kind of letting them know how it is when previously Jesus has kind of avoided the Pharisees for the most part and not really had to have any conversations with them, right? The first interaction he really had with Shmuel was in season three, other than the little bit that we saw in season one with him and Tamar and all of that. Um, So this is going to be really the first season when we see him diving into that world and completely kind of um, telling them how it is, those that are against him and those that don't really know what to do with him. They're asking him all these questions to try to trip him up, but it's going to be so cool to see where this actually lands later on. So that's the first one. The second one is actually in this same book, and we've got to go up to see this. So actually, it's this section right here in um, Matthew chapter 22. And this section right here is the second one that I think we may see in season four that I haven't really seen any evidence for yet, I guess is the best way to say that. Um, So here, starting in in, uh, chapter 22, verse 15, paying taxes to Caesar. I think we're going to see this or a variation of it in some way. Um, Maybe this has to do with when they're going to Jerusalem. Peter, you know, is is talking to him here and and different things like that. It's either this or, um, or a different section, but let's read through this first and we'll talk through it. Then the Pharisees went and plotted how to entangle him in his words, and they sent their disciples uh, to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true and teach the way of God truthfully, and you do not care about anyone's opinion, for you are not swayed by appearances. Tell us then, what do you think is lawful, to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose likeness is an inscription in this? And they said, Caesar's. And then he said to them, Therefore render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard it, they marveled, and they left him and went away. Now this passage on the surface it's so great, right? Jesus is telling them, okay, well, obviously Caesar's face is on it. Give it to Caesar's, right? Give to Caesar what is Caesar's. Give to God's. What is, give to God what is God's. But what is he actually saying here? And this is the reason why I would really love to see this in, in season four, because maybe the chosen could write in some more explanation and kind of dive deeper into this whole topic here. The reason why Jesus is saying give to Caesar's what is Caesar's is because it has its face on it, right? So why is he saying give to God the things 
that are gods. Well, everything is gods, right? But the point that Jesus is trying to make here, at least in my opinion, is reminding us whose image we're made in. We are made in the image of God. And so as we think about this verse, it's more than just give God what's his. He already owns everything. We don't need to give God anything that's his, right? The only thing that we can take away from him is ourselves. The only thing that we can kind of hinder him from having possession of is ourselves. Because God will not forcibly take you. He wants you to surrender. And so when we say give to God what is God's, he's talking about you. He's talking about who you are and you surrendering to him. And so I love this little tongue-in-cheek play that Jesus has here. And I would love to see a little bit more... um, a little bit more of an explanation, kind of diving into this in the chosen. I think it could be like a, a super powerful moment. Now, another uh, version of talking about taxes that I think would be cool as well would maybe be the the, the miracle of the fish, uh, where the fish comes up with the denarii in his mouth um, to pay the taxes for Jesus and Peter. And so this could be kind of cool as well. Maybe seeing that portion of it, seeing how taxes work, maybe even kind of, you know, laminating these two uh, together would be really, really cool as well. So those are the first two. My third one is found in John chapter 12. And so if we go over here, um, we have a couple from John chapter 12, because again, we're kind of getting close to the end of Jesus's ministry. And so we're kind of narrowing in on very specific things that I think need to happen in this season, specifically if season five is going to be Holy Week um, altogether. So real quick, I hope you're enjoying this episode so far. According to our statistics on YouTube, it actually turns out that less than 50% of you guys actually are subscribed. Just check for me real fast if you're subscribed to the channel and it would really help us out. All right, let's get back to the episode. This next one is actually about Mary. Now there's a lot of contention in this verse about who this Mary is. Some people believe it to be Mary Magdalene. I don't really see that. Some people believe it to be um, uh, the sister of uh, of Lazarus, right? And there's, there's plenty of different versions of this story, essentially. And some people will also argue, I know that you're commenting on this video right now. <laughs> some people will also argue uh, that there's different times when this anointing happened uh, throughout scripture, right? There's a lot of things that go on here, but let's just read the scripture. I think some variation of this is going to happen in the chosen for season four. So let's read into this. Mary anoints Jesus at Bethany. Again, this is John chapter 12. We're starting in verse one. Six days before the Passover, Jesus therefore came to Bethany where Lazarus was, whom Jesus has raised, has had raised from the dead. So I, we've talked about this in a previous video, but I think that the season is going to end or, or near end. Probably episode seven would be my guess. Uh, is going to is gonna have Lazarus raising from the dead. Obviously, he would die before that. So I really, truly think that uh, this is going to be a big portion of this season. And then we could also see this scene after Lazarus is raised, but before a different part that we're going to talk about in a second, uh, where they're having um, a dinner, basically, with Lazarus, who's been raised from the dead, but we also see Mary and Martha, okay? Um, So Lazarus, whom Jesus had raised from the dead, so they gave a dinner for him there. Martha served, and Lazarus was, uh, was one of those reclining with him at the table. Mary, therefore, took a pound of expensive ointment made from pure nard and anointed the feet of Jesus. Now, I could also see a world in which Dallas kind of incorporates not only this dinner that's happening here, but maybe also the Mary Martha conversation that he kind of puts those two together, just like he did for the feeding of the 5,000 and feeding of the 4,000. He might put these two together to where it's like uh, Lazarus is raised from the dead. They're having this dinner. Mary is at Jesus's feet listening to his teaching, but then she also anoints him. And then um, we also get the Mary Martha conversation uh, where he's like, Martha, Martha, you know, uh, Mary has chosen the better thing basically. Um, and so I, I think it's definitely possible that we could see all those things kind of mixed together here, but I'm not sure. Um, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume, but Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, he who was about to betray him said, why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief and having charge of the money bag, he used to help he used to help himself to what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her, leave her alone. 
so that she may keep it for the day of my burial. For the poor you will always have with you, but you do not always have me. So this is a really interesting scene because they could really mix together a bunch of different things. Not only the Mary Martha conversation, not only Lazarus being raised from the dead, not only Mary anointing his feet, but also Judas here as well. So we could see this all mixed together so that Judas is in this mix as well, because we're going to see the downfall of Judas in this season as well, as far as I know. So there's a lot of things in this specific verse that could fit super, super well into what we're supposed to be seeing soon. Um, now, the next one, we're actually going to go to Matthew chapter 19. This is a fun one as well. I really want to see this this uh, this section of, of, of scripture if we can. Um one of the greatest things, and I think especially for an American audience, the audience that is really viewing The Chosen, this could be a really eye-opening thing as well as we talk about the rich young ruler or the rich young man. So Matthew chapter 19, uh, starting in verse 16, we have the rich young man, and it says this, and, you, and behold, a man came up to him saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? And he said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? And Jesus says, you shall not murder. You shall you should not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. Uh, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. The young man, so again, Jesus is saying these things because it's wrote to him. The young man knows these things, right? As a, as a young Jewish man, as a young ruler, as a young rich Jewish man, he should understand these things because he's been, he's been learning them his whole life, right? And, and so Jesus is kind of speaking back to him what he expects to hear from Jesus in a way. The young man said to him, all these I have kept, what do I still lack? So he's saying, I've done all those things, am I not good enough? Jesus said to him, if you would be perfect, go. Sell what you possess and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, follow me. So he says, Basically, if you want to be perfect, <laughs> like if you want to do everything that you think that you can do, if you want to do everything that's possible, go and sell all that you possess, give it to the poor, and then come follow me. Now, Jesus is saying this very purposefully, right? Because he knows that this is not how this man wants to do things. This is not what he was expecting. It's not what he wants to do. Verse 22, when the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions, and Jesus said to his disciples, teaching them about this instance, right? After he went away, he says, Truly I say to you, the, uh, only with difficulty with a, will a rich man enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I tell you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. When the disciples heard this, they were greatly astonished. Because Jesus basically said, it's impossible, right? It's impossible for a rich man to get into heaven. And so they're astonished. They're like, who then can be saved, <laughs> right? Um, but Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. And again, we kind of go on and we, we see more and more of this kind of play out. But this is a, a huge thing, not only for the fact that we're talking about rich people here, but again, to point back to Jesus and his role in all of this, right? His role is not... Um, just to preach to people and to tell them like what's going on. His role is to literally save everyone, right? To save anybody that comes to him. And so salvation is not made through the things that you do. This is his point. It's not, it, salvation does not happen through the things that you do, how well you, uh, how well you follow the law, um, how good you are, how perfect you are. The only thing that you can do since we are all broken people and we all have sinned and we have all fallen short of the glory of God is that we have to trust on Jesus. And so that is his point here. His point is not that this rich young ruler in order to be saved needs to sell all of his things, but he needs to follow Jesus in that and trust Jesus and do whatever Jesus asks him to do. So it's not necessarily bad to have things or to be wealthy, but it is a bad thing if you don't obey what God has asked you to do. And that includes maybe getting rid of all your possessions. That includes, you know, doing whatever God asks you to do. So 
I don't know. I love that verse. I think this could be another super powerful moment, but I haven't seen any evidence so far of this being in the chosen season four, though I would really love to see it for sure. Now, this last one on my list, that was number four. This is number five on my list is one that I think is actually going to be upcoming very soon. So a lot of people have asked me, Hey, Brandon, um, you know, there's this thing coming up in Utah. Like a bunch of people have been invited out that, that did these fundraiser things, by the way, me and Vanessa are going to be out there. I don't know anything about what, what's going to happen out there, but I know a couple of things, right? One, it's going to be in Utah, which means it's going to be in Jerusalem. And there's a bunch of people, like a ton of people who got invited out to this thing. So my guess is that this scene is going to be something very important. It's going to be something very intentional. And I don't think it's going to be some random scene in the middle of, of the season. I think this is going to be the finale, maybe even the finale shot of season four. This is back in John 12, also known as the triumphal entry. This is my guess as to what The Chosen is actually going to be filming in Utah coming up in, you know, a few weeks. This should be really interesting to see, but let me kind of read this through for you. The next day, the large crowd that had come to the feast heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem. So they took branches of palm trees and went out to meet him, crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, even the king of Israel. And Jesus found a young donkey and sat on it. Just as it is written, fear not, daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming, sitting on a donkey's colt. His disciples did not understand these things at first, but when Jesus was glorified, then they remembered that these things had been written about him and had been done to him. The crowd that had been with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead continued to bear witness. So again, we're linking all of these things together. We know that in season four, Lazarus is going to die and be raised from the dead. So that means we're going to see these big crowds begin to form with Jesus because they're so profoundly impacted by the raising of Lazarus. Having seen that, right? Having, having been with him, as, this, as the scripture says here. So again, this links a lot of things together. Season three, what did we see? We saw the bridle that Jesus is going to ride in on with, right? With this donkey. We also see Lazarus and Mary and Martha, that relationship being built. We're going to see Lazarus die, come back to life. We could get that Mary Martha scene I was talking about earlier, but we also, I think like this is like a 99% that the season is going to end with this. At least that's my guess. And, you know, I don't even have to say that myself. You guys can hear Dallas's words about my guesses. I wish you weren't quite so good at your guessing. You're clearly the best. I mean, clearly, he says I'm the best. So, I mean, that's just like, that's his words. You guys can go check out that interview on our channel. <laughs> but this is my guess for triumphal entry at the end of the season. I, I think that would like, that would be perfect here. The reason why the crowd went to him was that they heard he had done this sign, raising Lazarus from the dead. So the Pharisees said to one another, you see that you are gaining nothing. Look, the world has gone after him. So again, there's so much more to this that kind of builds up after the raising of Lazarus. But I think that would be a perfect season finale moment. Jesus riding in on the cult, everybody, you know, yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna. Also, Jesus weeping at this moment, because again, as we see in the triumphal entry, we see him um, sad because most of the people here believe that he is going to be a conquering king and not the suffering servant that we see him as in scripture. And so, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, uh, really, really cool overall. I think there's going to be a lot of stuff kind of coming here. I hope you like this small part of our live stream. If you want to check out the full live stream, go over to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the snipe life. The best way to help us in this ministry and on our YouTube channel. Thanks.